suggest you, you know, reach out to me. And let's work things out. There's nothing you cannot work out. I assure you, we can work things out and ensure that, you know, you don't lose any mark. And you understand clearly what we are teaching. That is that about that. Now, this today we'll be talking about the themes in this play. They are endless. They are almost 50 if you talk about all the things. But I'll just be pointing out major ones. You understand? I'll be talking about major themes in the text. You get? Not every single. I'll be talking about major themes, you know, so that we can end the lecture. The other ones, you can read them on your own. But these are the main themes in this text. And that is what we are going to be doing. Is that, are we together? Are we together? Is this one? Is that clear? Now, we are going to begin with the themes in... The text, the theme in this text, we have, of course, you know, we have so many themes. We have the theme of invisibility, we have the theme of blindness, we have the theme of self definition. You know, our character tried to find himself, tried to find, you know, define, you know, everything about him. And so, there are so many themes. We have racism, we have power and self interest, invisibility, blindness struggle for self-definition identity crisis oh now let's begin with theme of blackness now before we begin you know as usual make sure this text is beside you make sure you have a pen okay i don't have a pen <laughs> make sure but i have a note make sure you have a notebook are you together okay let's make progress now the first and perhaps most blackness theme of blackness he he revolves all over this play all about this prose oh, i'm sorry all, all over this novel yes you know okay now let's look at the characters were blind reverend homer can you remember that reverend you know that reverend that gave a speech about the founder of the um, narrator's college he was giving this powerful speech it was even after the speech the narrator realized that he was blind you know this thing of blindness it tells us how blind the society is to the plight of the blacks you understand you know, I have noticed uh, a system. It's in uh, these um, African American play books, like in the Native Son, Mary Dalton, her mother was blind. Her blindness was significant. It told us how much the the whites could not see the oppression. You understand? So physical blindness, it's more like a metaphor for difficulty blindness. They don't see the oppression. They don't see the racism. Or they pretend not to see, they pretend to be blinded from the truth. And that is what happened in this play. You can remember at the beginning, the narrator, I don't know if you can find it. He told us of one time when he was going somewhere and he was passing and it felt like, yes, page four. Let's go at page four. Are we together? Please, everybody, page four. He said, one night, I accidentally bumped into a man. And perhaps because of the near darkness, he saw me and called me an insulting name i sprang at him seized his coats lapels and demanded that he apologized he was a tall blonde man and as my face came close to his he looked insolently out of his blue eyes and crushed me his breath caught in my face as he struggled you know and so on and so on and he told him apologize apologize i kicked him repeatedly so you know, say when okay, holding him okay, when it occurred to me that the man had not seen me, actually that he, as far as he knew, was in the midst of a walking nightmare. I stopped the blade, slicing the air as I pushed him away. You understand? He was walking and someone bumped into him. You know, he said, say, apologize. You don't disrespect me that way because you are white. You know, you know, the first thing that came to the narrator's mind was oppression. Then it occurred to him that this man did not even see him. The man, you know, there are things that happen to you and you are like in a daze, you are like in a stupor, you are shocked. Sometimes not like an accusation. You are the one that did this and you don't even know what they are talking about. You are like, what exactly is going on here? That is some predicament this guy found himself in. That is the white man. You know, they, they pretend to be blind. They don't want to see the truth. They don't want to see beyond themselves. And that is the exact situation the narrator found himself in. Yeah. So uh, that that incident is it's not just literal; it's figurative. They pretend not to see. They oppress us. They deny us our fundamental rights, but they pretend not to see it. <coughs> Are we together? Now, the first and perhaps most significant example of this is at the beginning of the novel, 
when the young black men are made to fight in the battle royale why blindfolded you know there was a time they were to fight he went for this battle they were entertaining the whites of course they wanted to watch the niggas kill each other fight each other and now for them they blindfolded them it was a theme theme of blindness you understand they blinded them away from the from the from the um ridicule from the scorn they were blinded they closed them so that they could kill each other that is how the society viewed the blacks you understand it was entertainment for the white but for the blacks it was a struggle you put them in blindfolds and pitch them against one another when they're supposed to be and their eyes are supposed to be open and they should stand together to fight the common enemy so at the bottom area they were on blindfolds that is an important thing they put all the wrestlers on and all the wrestlers were blacks the people watching were mostly whites the sponsors they were mostly whites but the the young black men they were to fight in the battle with blindfolds how can you make someone fight blindfold is that not suffering is that not wickedness so that he doesn't have to see his enemy really significant this is also true for jack a prominent leader of the brotherhood of course you know jack now brother jack brother jack the knight brother jack the brother jack that is fighting for the blacks in quotes you know at least that's what he claims to be doing i don't know about that the protagonist learns that the narrator the protagonist learns at the end of the novel that jack wears a glass eye and he starts limited in vision now his physical blindness is a metaphor for his social blindness his political blindness now he is physically blind and it you can also see that he he it shows that he had no vision for the brotherhood he just wanted to he was just running the brotherhood for his selfish interest he had no vision that's physical blindness is figurative he had no vision for, he had no plan he had no plan to alleviate the oppression he never spoke up for the black can you remember in time when he spoke about the blacks instead of instead they used the narrator as a puppet he never spoke up for the blacks he had no vision his own was to just get a black guy so that the, it seems like the brotherhood is being run by the blacks you know get the black guy to speak for us but he had no plans for them visionless organization that organization was visionless and the narrator got to realize it late that is all when he got into the organization they wanted them to wanted him to do things the way they liked now the narrator repeatedly notes that people's inability to see what they wish not to see their inability to see that which their prejudice does not allow them to see has forced him in a life of effective invisibility you understand you know people you know the whites chose to see what they wish to see and the one they don't want to see they chose not to see they pretend not to notice the brotherhood will not notice when Todd Clipson was killed that was when the narrator went to give a speech they were angry that he, he he's selfish he he made it all about him that how will he give a speech under the name of the organization the one you are to see you will see the one you are to not see you will see you can see them gunning you see them gunning down black men and you choose not to see it you choose to be you make it seem like it's invisible it's not something to be talked about why would he give a speech at the funeral Todd Clifton was a patriot of lifting was loyal to the organization but they turned their back on him the slightest moment they felt like and you call yourself the brotherhood you call yourself a voice for the voiceless oh my god you are liars the theme of blindness down to reverend homer i want you to go and read well about that man he was blind of course he was praising the founders of the college and all oh, the later discovered he was blind before he now died the theme of blindness reverberates the theme of blindness revolves all over this book it is an important thing they do not see oppression these white people refuse to see oppression you understand but they chose to see color they pretend not to see when the blacks are being thrown out of their house but they chose to see color they chose to see who they decide to give jobs can you see that it is like selective blindness i can be blind today and not be blind tomorrow i can be blind in this situation and be you know i can't see then my eyes will be wide open in the other situation they were all hypocrites they were all deceiving themselves now some of invisibility of course we all know this thing it is a major thing now the narrator puts on invisibility in order to express himself in a society that is not safe for the blacks he is visible on the surface but 
he is really invisible. You understand? Why did the narrator feel invisible? He felt invisible because he felt like he, he had to leave. He said, look at the beginning where he started. Look at the prologue. I am an invisible man. No. I am not a spook like those who haunted Edgar Allan Poe. No, I'm iron of your Hollywood movie, Ectoplasm. I am a man of substance, of flesh and bones, fiber and liquid, and I might even be said to possess a mind. I am invisible, understand, simply because people refuse to see me. That is just it. Nor is my invisibility, second paragraph, exactly a matter of biochemical accident to my epidemics. That invisibility to which I refer occurs because of a peculiar disposition of the eyes of those with whom I come in contact. Who are those? The whites. They refuse to see him as a human being. They see him as a black man. They refuse to see him like as a unique individual, like every other individual out there. They decided to see him as a nigger. You are a nigger and that is all we see. You are a nigger and this is how you behave. You are a nigger and this is the kind of jobs you will get. You are a nigger and this is the kind of houses you will live in. We ain't giving you our house. Why can't you just see him as an individual? That was what he was suffering for. He couldn't even think on his own. He had to think the way the white man wanted him to think. He had to reason the way they wanted him to reason. He had to act the way, you know, they wanted him to act. He did not have a mind of his own. His invisibility did not even call for racism alone, not just in the idea of uh, because, because of racism. Look at the brotherhood that was supposed to um, be a voice for the voiceless. But in the brotherhood, he still had to act the way he was. He, they had to send him to, is he Hambro? To undergo some training. When he gave his first speech, a speech that struck a chord in the hearts of the people, they did not like it. It sounded so, you know, it was too up there. They wanted him to tone it down. So just when he thought he had found the voice, it's come that he is still invisible. The prologue tells you everything about the thing. Like I tell you, when I'm talking about a book and you don't quote, you have not started. He attributes his invisibility largely to his inability to define himself outside the influence of others. Of course, you can see he has been influenced from day one. Even when he was working at um, the um, optic paint or whatever, Liberty paint, you understand? He didn't have a mind of his own. Down to when he now found the brotherhood, he didn't have a mind of his own. Down to when they now sent him to the women's center, all because they felt his policies were against their principles the protagonist struggles to be seen as an individual by others in the novel he is continually identified by his grouping what is his grouping black that is just that is just his grouping black whether it be as a black man or a southerner you know when you come from the south it seems like you're violent you're violent chicago south or a member of the brotherhood he had to be seen as someone from a group not just as narrator okay that is narrator he's a nice guy he's narrator mm -mm. Narrator, he's black, he's from the south, he's a member of the brotherhood. Simple. They, there were stereotypes. In fact, there were certain ways he was expected to behave because he's from the south. He ultimately experience, experiments with, his, with this invisibility when he disguises himself for protection against Ras. You remember when he disguises, disguised himself as Reinhardt? He's mistaken for Reinhardt, a figure with multiple identities. The protagonist notes that Reinhardt has made the most out of his invisibility and that might be an option for his own life. For the first time, he experimented with invisibility since they don't see me for who I am. This guy innocently just to hide from Reinhardt. He wore hide from Ras. He wore a hat and the glasses and he became a new man. In fact, that was a period where he felt like a person. For the first time, he had a name. Reinhardt. He looked like someone with multiple identities. He has always been, you know, for the first time, he was so excited. At the point, he was a pimp. At the point, he was a pastor. He was a thief. He was, ah, ah. You know, he see, he knows that, and he, he knows that Reinhardt has made the most out of his invisibility, and that might be an option for his own life. You understand? Reinhardt, this thing worked for him. You understand? This whole thing worked for Reinhardt. Reinhardt discovered that Today I can be this, I can be that. And it has been looking for this guy. He never met the guy. But the moment he dressed like the guy, he be had, he now adopted multiple identities. Multiple! Surplus! Are you getting it? So that is that about the theme of invisibility. So you see, the narrator's invisibility is figurative. 
and stems from not being seen as a free thinking individual imagine not having a thought of your own at that times i feel like people don't see me i feel obscure i, I feel like i'm not obvious i feel like do they even notice me that times i feel like people pass through me that time we feel that way like our thoughts are not heard we are not recognized for him it was his normal life it wasn't just a a you know for some time for us it's a passing phase but for him it was who he was imagine being like that forever and that was why he went into hiding and he now made up his mind you know he came out you know he later came out out of hiding and he said he is ready to face society you understand the narrator engaged in okay you know and that's that's about the theme of invisibility briefly you should be able to expatiate now racism oh beautiful racism 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 the narrator is a black american struggling to arrive at a conception of his own identity you know the theme of racism now when you feel one race is superior you know i can't i won't even dwell on this much the white always felt they were up there and we were down here you understand struggling to arrive at the conception of his own identity his effort is fruitless because of the fact that he's a black man living in a racist american society even black men with degrees hardly get white collar jobs because of their color but they are more intelligent than those so-called people they give the jobs to you understand he struggled in america he struggled in college look at where he drove mr norton as he was a chauffeur of course why can't they get a white chauffeur for the man it has to be a nigger, a black man. Why would a white drive another white so on the same pedestal? You know, that's just that's about racism. Racism. Look at the look at him of racism when that old man was thrown out of the house they've been living in. You know, that was when his spirit of public speaking came. Because the guy was furious, the guy was um, mortified, he was embarrassed, he was angry. He said, This can't be happening. I remember that was when Jordan Jack recognized him. See, Yep, we found our puppets. Let's throw him. When that family was thrown, they come, oh, they just eject out of your house. They don't care who you are, white or black, and um, black or whatever. Of course, obviously, black, not white. That was how they treated us. You know, also, the narrator's grandfather's opinion made us to be conscious of racism. What was his grandfather's opinion? Let's quickly see his grandfather's opinion on pages um, 16. Can we all go there? Yep, page 16. Scene. when his grandfather was dying he said are we together let's go to 15 first the last line on 15 want to go on his deathbed he called my father to him and said son after i'm gone i want you to keep up the good fight i never told you but our life is a war and i have been a traitor all my born days on the line traitor quickly a spy in the enemy's country ever since i give up my gun back in the reconstruction live with your head in the lion's mouth i want you to overcome them with yeses and undermine them with greens agree with them to death and destruction let them swallow you till they vomit or bust wide open you understand then he now later told him learn it to the young ones Yes, he said that was the only way to survive. Kill them with yeses. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Sure, sir. Anything, sir. Agree with them until they vomit. Agree with them until they vomit or bust wide open. You can see the exaggeration there. That that was the only way to survive in a racist society like America. You understand? He was saying that that was how he survived, though. See it now. Overcome them with yeses. You know, let them swallow you to the vomit or bust wide open. It means you have to suck up to them. You have to be loyal. You have to be loyal to this white. You cannot be your own individual. That was how bad it was. Are you guys getting me? Are we together? Now, Liberty Paints. The, you know Liberty Paints. After he discovered that the Mr. Bledsoe deceived him, he now went to Liberty Paints. The workforce is primarily black, but the final product is handled by the whites. And what's the slogan read? It's racist because the only, they only produce white paint and they say they are keeping America pure. Now, let's look at Liberty Paint. It's very symbolic. It will be under symbolism. Note that down. It's an industry. They produce paints. Do you guys know how that paint is produced? Now, let's look at Liberty Paint. Now, let's look at, uh, let's go to page, um... 
page 182 quickly 182 are we together 182 now can you see the slogan there keep american pure with liberty paint isn't that ironic how can you keep america pure a society reading with racism you are keeping america pure a paint that is being made by your workforce which which are predominantly black people you know how ironic you call these people racist you make them make your paints and you now call it keep america pure it's really symbolic they only produce white paint and they say they are keeping america pure does it even make sense now let's go to pages 185 185 185 185 185 now this was when his first boss was telling him how to make the paint i want you guys to hear how the paint is made let's go to 185 yes okay 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 yes let's go to the second to the last paragraph damn those laboratory blubber heads to hell there's got to be dope put in every single son of a bitching bucket and that's what you are going to do and it's got to be put in so it can be trucked out here before 11 30. He handed me a white enamel graduate and what looked like a battery hydrometer. The idea is to open each bucket and pour in 10 drops of this stuff. Then you stir it till it disappears. After it's mixed, you take this brush and paint out a sample or one of these. He produced a number of small re rectangular boards and a small brush from his jacket pocket. You understand? Yes, sir. But when I looked into the white graduate, I hesitated. The liquid inside was dead black was he trying to kid me this is a paint made from you know okay he handed me a white animal graduate this is a paint that is made from black it's a mixture of black you see the irony the paint is a mixture of black paint and white paint can you see that but but the final product is optic white now look at it it means the white and the black can actually come together to be one you can see that the paint cannot be optic white without black and the paint cannot be optic white without white but the final product is white is it the society decided to be blind to that that is the height of racism do they know that this paint is made from black you understand are you getting the symbolism there you have to put droplets of black to make it perfect to make it pure it means blacks are important to the society but they chose to turn a blind eye to that if you notice he walked into a union meeting most of their laborers there were blacks it was the blacks running things the blacks had all the ideas but they chose to turn a blind eye to those things that is racism when i talk about racism you should have thousands of things to say now struggle for self-definition the narrator desires to change the course of his story that makes the white more important than the blacks when he joins the brotherhood they attempt to redefine him you know he was struggling to define himself who he is in the society then finally you know he later joined the brotherhood it's not a bad idea at least in the brotherhood i can speak for myself i can stand in the gap for my people i can i can i can solicit for them when necessary but he discovered that in the brotherhood they will give him a new name and a new identity just when he thought he has found a place that he can be himself he wasn't himself from day one he had to get a new name a new identity and he had to go through intense instruction serious instruction they in fact they were not comfortable with his first speech because that speech was from his heart they had to take him to training so that he will not be speaking how he should speak not how he's supposed to how he wants to speak you can see just when he's struggling to find himself he has he has not still found you know some of you feel that way you don't know where you stand you don't know you don't know where to put your legs one minute you are here but you just don't feel you belong here you're there some of you are still struggling to find yourself self-definition who are you he had to adapt to the organization's philosophy you can see a lot of stereotypes because it's from the start you should behave the same way you understand stereotypes blacks are violent blacks are this blacks are that they kill you on the street the way they killed Todd Clifton the narrator had to go underground in order to defend himself you know at the point he got tired remember he said he's going down towards the epilogue he said he is done he is going underground 
he can't seem to find himself so let him go underground maybe he will be able to find him self you can remember you understand he does this because he's not able to find solution to the racial prejudice the racial bias in society his decision to go underground and come back later also pre also pretends that the narrator has not relented in his struggle to find his identity through this we will discover that the narrator has not relented in his struggle to find his identity now how many have we discussed we discussed the theme of blindness um, individual um, invisibility racism and struggle for self-definition these are the four major things we'll be looking at today are you getting it